All right, in this video, I'm going to introduce you to a certain simulation run by FET that will hopefully help you determine uh, some more properties of electric fields and charges and see how all of that works out. Today, we're going to be focusing in on this uh, simulation, charges and fields. And here it is. So you have your box of goodies over here. So you have positive charges of 1 nanocoulomb and you have negative charges of 1 nanocoulomb and these are your positive test charges in this simulation they're called E-field sensors but you can't detect an E-field other than through the use of charges now one of the things that you also notice we have a toolbox on here and we're gonna check some of these for right now these ones we're going to ignore okay that we haven't learned anything about yet so we're gonna ignore that for now but we will check some other boxes specifically we're gonna check the uh, grid always useful to have a grid. And we're going to show the electric field since that's something that we've been talking about. So I take a positive charge out here of one nanocoulomb and you can see that I now have these electric field vectors. These, this is a, a vector field. I'm going to show you in a different simulation field lines um, so you can get a feel for how, how that works. But these are field vectors and a common convention that's used in simulations is that we represent the strength of the field vectors not by their length because that can get very cluttered um, but through the shade, through the shading. So as you get further away, we have these dimmer, more transparent arrows, and that's indicating a weaker field. And I can pull out an electric charge sensor, and you can see that as I pull it closer, it gets much, much larger. As I bring it further away, it gets much smaller and almost disappears in terms of the size of the, the force that it's experiencing. Um, if I put it near one of the arrows, you can see that it does, in fact, point off in that direction. And if I put it sort of in between, it splits the angle. Now, it's important to bear in mind that this is not necessarily the direction that the charge would travel. This is the direction of the force on it. So if it were already moving across the screen like this, let's say, it's not going to suddenly, once it gets to here and to this arrow, it's not going to suddenly change direction and be shooting off in this direction that's just going to cause it to curve its path, right? To change its path because the force is being acted upon it. So that's just something to bear in mind. This is representative of the force that's going to be exerted on it, not the direction of actual motion. Um, now, if I pull out a negative charge, we have what's called a dipole. So a positive and negative charge give us a dipole. And maybe it'll work a little bit better if I put them slightly off at the, the side of that grid mark there. And you can see the field line in between them should go roughly directly from the positive to the negative charge. And if I put my little detector out here, you can see that that's the case, and it's a very strong force. And the reason for that is because this, being a positive chest charge, should be pushed by the positive charge and pulled by the negative charge. As we go off to the side, the force diminishes it because we're getting further and further away from the charges. And as we continue to go away, the force goes away to almost nothing. And one of the properties of a dipole, and you can see this in the size of the field, is as you bring them closer and closer together, the field outside diminishes to almost nothing very rapidly until we get to the point where we overlap them completely. And the field outside should all but disappear if I could actually get them to occupy the same space. And that should make sense because if I put a positive charge and a negative charge directly on top of each other, you have essentially zero charge present. Now I'm going to show you a slightly different arrangement. Here I have two positive charges of equal size, and I've put my E-field detector in between. You can see there's actually nothing. There's no arrow coming from the E-field detector, and that's because these are two charges of equal size, equal magnitude, and so we get zero force directly in between them. But as I move it off to one side, you can see that it gets pushed in the opposite direction and so on. And this looks very similar to the simulation that you were making using vPython. Now the advantage of this simulation is that you can very easily just change something and see what's the result on the electric field. Um, but the downside of this is that there's no time dependency, so you can't see what happens over time. So both of these simulations, the ones that you've made through vPython and this one, serve completely different purposes. Um, one of the things that you can see here is if I move it off the side, there will be no oscillation back and forth. It'll just shoot off in that direction. However, if I've got it in between and I move it slightly off along the, the axis connecting them, then we would get that oscillation that should be familiar to us at this point. 
So here what I've done is I've arranged a bunch of positive charges and a bunch of negative charges uh, along um, opposite sides of each other. And you can see that the field lines in between are mostly straight down towards the negative charges. And outside the plates, they're straight away from the positive and straight towards the negative. And there's a little bit of a curving towards the sides, and it, it diminishes in strength as we go away. If I let me just get rid of the field lines for a second. If I put a detector in between them, you can see that no matter where I put it, it's pretty much going in the same direction. And another cool thing is if I show the number here, let's see, this is 269.3 volts per meter. We're actually getting to, for the, the moment at least, use newtons per coulomb as the units for electric fields. Um, they're the same thing, but we'll just use newtons per coulomb for now. And as I shift it, you can see that it does in fact change in strength as we get closer to the positive plate and closer to the negative plate. If, however, I did this perfectly, so basically I left no gap in between any of the charges, whether on the positive side or the negative side, we would actually not notice any real deep change in the field strength as we moved along. Um, now that's certainly not the case here because I don't have the whole region populated with charges. So it actually will, will make it work a little bit better if I even move them a little bit off the side here. Might not be noticeably better, but it'll be a little bit better okay, in terms of the consistency throughout. So that's something that we have to, to take into account is that we're, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to idealize situations where we'll say we have basically an infinite number of little tiny charges along the line here and an infinite number of little tiny charges along the line here and they give us an electric field that's equivalent throughout. However, what we know from reality is that that's probably, well, in many cases that's not quite the case. And so you actually end up with a situation much more like this where it's not quite uniform, but it's pretty close. It's not a bad approximation as long as you don't get too close to these charges, right? Where we've got like a thousand there now that I'm almost on top of that charge. But somewhere in between it, it fluctuates a little bit, but it's pretty close. And we pretend like it doesn't cause it to move off to the side at all. But you can see here clearly as I get towards the edges, it definitely starts to move off to the side some more. And this is called an edge effect. So one of the things that we'll often do is we'll say, oh, well, this, these lines are, of charges are also infinitely long. So we don't have to worry about the edges, which is a clever way of simplifying the physics, but of course it hides what's actually happening. So I think it's important for you to see or be able to see some of the things that actually happen compared to what we'll talk about as happening in theoretical problems. Um, you will have an assignment uh, related to this simulation. It's more of a, a puzzle really. And you're going to try to determine where these charges are based on the reaction of two test charges. Okay, Obviously it won't be quite this situation, but you might need to put charges on top of each other and so on in order to get the exact results that we're looking for.